All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good Wednesday morning. Let's go ahead and get airborne with our uh, solo Amazon brief. Shoot a sniper right now. Full put spread on SPX. Uh, if you know what you're doing, I was waiting for that turn. And there goes that shot up in the S&P uh, 500. So good morning. Um, let's start with a couple questions. How many of you want to make money today? There's a little chat box over there on the right side. You can throw your comments in there. I can see your chat. Uh, other folks can't. But how many of you want to make money? Okay. Good. Some good answers. And, well, that's good because there's some of my TGO members in here. Um, because they figured out that's not the answer. The answer, ladies and gentlemen, is what? To not lose money i want to make money i need to make money comes from a place of lack how many of you started today with some gratitude i know some of you're sitting here like i came to learn about making money in 2024 exactly how many of you woke up this morning and thanked something something greater than you the universe, source, truth, divine, creator. I prefer to use the word God. Did you wake up and show some gratitude, man, that you woke up? We're on an internet right now, man. We got ones and zeros and trons and photons zipping around. It's, it's insane. So starting your day with a little bit of gratitude, a little bit of thanks, it, it gets you centered. You're not starting from a place of lack. It, it's it's not, I need this. Technically, you don't need anything, man. You need some shelter, you need some food, and you need some water, right? So uh, I know most of you didn't expect to come to a brief to open like that, but that's exactly how I start my day. Not saying that I'm right, not saying I'm wrong. Uh, woke up, got my, my morning brief on, obviously my Maverick mind. Uh, I did my microdose today. Meditated, went to a 60-minute hot vinyasa session, came back, and I am fired up and ready to go. I am centered. If you wake up, grab your coffee, throw on CNBC, and I need to make money today, man, I'm telling you, you're coming from a place uh, of lag. That's exactly right, Dennis. It's always great to uh, wake up and still be breathing. So welcome aboard. Coming from a place of gratitude. Let's sit up straight because uh, no distraction, silence your electronic nicotine because for the majority of you, you've never heard what I'm about to tell you. Now, I have some current Top Gun Options members in here right now. They come to all my briefs. doesn't matter if it's a free marketing brief. They're in here because they know they're going to get some good intel, okay? But you've never heard this. Now, trading the Death Star. Uh, now, we're probably all of the age that we either grew up or we were young adults uh, when Star Wars came out. Death Star, big moon-sized space station taking over uh, the universe. I don't think that's physically possible, knowing how universe, how big the universe is. Was how do you know how big the universe is? Because I've seen it, and we're going to get to that. Anyway, um, it got blown up, got attacked by some teenagers in a space Winnebago, got rebuilt. It, 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 this stock we're going to talk about today, I just liken to the Death Star because it's taking over everything that it touches. It gets attacked. It gets attacked often. And it gets stronger. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're going to talk about trading the Death Star today. Now, Navy fighter pilot, current fighter pilot, taking my jet next weekend up to Sun and Fun down here in Florida. So, we're going to have a little little start with fighter aviation to our brief this morning. Which fighter aircraft, little multiple choice quiz, would you rather fly? I don't know anything about aviation. Well, take a look at a couple of pictures then. This is the F-4 Phantom. And yeah, we have a TGO member that's old enough, senior enough that he flew this aircraft. Look at that. Just looking at that cockpit gives me agita. Over 300 switches and dials in that cockpit. The pilot would spend a lot of what we call heads down time staring at this stuff instead of eyeballs out of the cockpit. Looking for surface-to-air missiles, SAMs, or AAA, anti-aircraft artillery, or enemy MiGs, enemy aircraft. This 
aircraft was so labor intensive they threw another dude in the back seat just to run the radar man very labor intensive aircraft or that aircraft ladies and gentlemen trading investing is a form of combat somebody's going to win and somebody's going to get their ass kicked which one do you want to be this is a shot of the cockpit of the f-35 the lightning two the most advanced fighter aircraft on the planet two iPads. It's, it's got two flat panel displays, ladies and gentlemen. This jet is so smart, it limits, it minimizes the amount of information displayed to the pilot at different portions of the flight because the jet's smart enough to say he or she doesn't need to know this right now. I got it. Here's the creepy part. These jets are learning. All the F-35s from Israel to Norway to the United States are all tied into the, to the central system, man. Oh, well, this pilot did this at this portion of the flight when this was going on. Noted, it's going to get smart enough where the pilot's going to be gone someday, and it's going to be an autonomous killing machine, and it's going to kill all of us. But let's talk happy. <laughs> there is no steam gauges in this cockpit. Obviously, trading being combat or in combat, you want this type of system, and that's what you're going to learn about today, this stock. Okay? So... Uh, by the end of the brief, what a good sniper shot. You should have shot a bull put spread on the S&P 500 right there. And you could keep it going. Uh, I'm going to give you an up-to-date intelligence brief. The world's going to shit. It's going to hell in a handbasket. It's not getting better. Every day that goes by, it gets worse. Israel, Hamas, Hezbollah, Iran, Ukraine, Russia, Taiwan, China. Raging inflation. We're broke we're $34, $35 trillion in debt. We're bankrupt, and we're, we're going straight down with both engines on fire. Nobody's doing anything about it. Show you the only stock you need to own uh, and a good substitute to trade if you just don't like this stock for whatever reason, but you're going to love it. Uh, real quick, you know, how's the smart money doing? This is uh, 2023. This is the performance in 2023. The, you know, people go to cocktail parties. Oh, I'm in a hedge fund. Oh, uh, lucky you. No, not lucky you. You're an idiot if you're in a hedge fund. The average hedge fund in 2023 pulled down nine. I'll give them, I'll round up for them, 9.29%. That's what the smart money did last year. How'd I do? Well, when the market was all over the place, especially look at this, towards the end, the summer and fall of last year, take a look at my personal account. Towards the summer and fall last year. I destroyed it. I love volatility, right? Everybody's a genius when the market's been going straight up for the past four months. That's, that's easy. Everybody's doing the same. No, you're not a genius when the market's going straight up. You know who's a genius? Me. When the market's zipping all over the place. My personal portfolio was up 151% last year. Crushing the S&P 500, crushing the NASDAQ, and the Dow's an embarrassment. The Dow uh, barely beat uh, being in a hedge fund. You could have just bought uh, the Dow last year and been a hedge fund manager. Okay, so that's why you should listen to me. Who am I? Who is me? I am me. I'm Matthew Wiz Buckley. My parents loved me. I'm pretty sure they didn't name me Wiz. I earned that call sign flying the F-18 Hornet to the United States Navy for about 15 years. Graduated from the Navy Fighter Weapons School. A lot of words around that patch. The short word is Top Gun, where I was an adversary pilot. I was a bad guy. I flew in bad guy jets, shooting bad guy missiles and executing bad guy tactics to help our good guys get ready to go uh, and meet real bad guys. Uh, deployed for Operation Southern Watch over Southern Iraq, noble eagle and enduring freedom. What's this have to do with trading? Everything, man. Trading is a form of combat, right? Everything I learned as a fighter pilot, I applied to my trading, having a strategy, implementing tactics to support the strategy, contingency planning. Before I got airborne on any mission, I sat there drinking my venti upside down caramel macchiato in the air conditioning going, okay, what could go wrong during this mission that I can talk about right now before freaking the hell out airborne when it goes wrong, right? Same thing in trading. I applied all of this stuff to trading. How about risk management? I started this brief by asking you, do you want to make money today? That's the wrong answer. Wiz, I don't want to lose money today. That's the right answer. I want to preserve capital. I want to manage my risk. I'm going to talk to you today about option, uh, options and how you can limit your risk. I did a, uh, a brief yesterday on a podcast and people are like, oh, yeah, we're all taught that options are dangerous and scary. I'm like, dude, 
options when they first came out in the early 70s. Call options were a bunch of white dudes with cigars in the back room. Like, how do we make even more money? And there's no way when they came out with options in the early 70s, they envisioned uh, little old ladies in tennis shoes on a computer with an E-Trade platform. Okay, so I'm going to destroy whatever you think about uh, options. But managing risk. I'm an options trader. I'm a fighter pilot. I want to minimize all known risks so I can win. Okay. Eventually, my trading worked so well when I transitioned out of the military. I popped up on the radar of one of the largest volatility options trading firms in the world, headquartered right there. That's our trading floor in the CBOT, the Chicago Board of Trade. Everybody should know that building if you've been to Chicago or you've seen Batman. Uh, that's our trading floor. That was our research desk area over here. That was the hedge fund. I helped build the hedge fund when I was there. I helped build a retail brokerage some of you might have traded at called Options House. I just had a blast, man. Good time in my life. Uh, I helped run this multi-billion dollar firm. And then I started uh, underneath that firm, the Options News Network. We were the CNBC for options, man. Uh, I shot on the floor of the CBO, Chicago Board Options Exchange, and the CBOT, Chicago Board Options uh, Trade giving you all retail traders a behind the scenes look at what was going on in the options market, man. It was, it was a blast. Uh, I jokingly tell people I was Eddie Murphy in trading places. Uh, you know, little, little dude from, uh, from the streets dealing with the smart money. I found out ladies and gentlemen, the smart money ain't that smart. Matter of fact, we're the smart money. We, <laughs> I wrote a book about it, man. COVID crash in the span of a couple weeks, Topkin Options members, or at least I did, and I showed these members live, made $2.5 million. When? Every day, the smart money during the COVID crash said, oh, the, this is the bottom. I'd be a buyer of stocks here. Donald J. Trump. He deleted the tweet eventually. I have a screenshot of it. I'd be a buyer of stocks here. Stocks are looking good. You're an idiot if you don't buy stocks today. The next day, the Dow went down 3,000 points. I think I made $75,000 with some puts on the S&P 500. That was the smart money, folks, right? Uh, who was it? Uh, Kyle Bass and Ackman and all those guys crying on CNBC. We need to close markets. Every, everybody just needs to, you know, everybody just, we need to stop. And I'm like, no, 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 dude. That ain't how this works. There's somebody on the other side of your bullish bullshit trades right now, and it's me. Wrote a book about it. Uh, and then obviously wrote another book called From Sea Level to Sea Level, Leaving the United States Military, Fighter Pilot, and uh, Applying Everything That I Learned to the Business World. have a top podcast uh, in the world. It's called the Max Afterburner Podcast, sponsored by No Fallen Heroes. It's ranked in the top 2.5% of podcasts in the world. I had to Google that real quick. I'm like, okay, is that a big deal? Well, there's 3.2 uh, million podcasts in the world. So being ranked in the top 2.5% puts a smile on my face. And then this is obviously my pride and joy uh, today. Uh, I told you earlier, how do you know what the universe looks like? I've seen it. Three years ago, I did psychedelic assisted therapy with Marcus Luttrell, the lone survivor. Uh, Jared Taylor, one of the founders of Black Rifle Coffee. Uh, another Navy SEAL and an NFL player suffering from horrific CTE. I did a medicine called Ibogaine and 5-MeO-DMT, and it saved and changed my life. I got home. I said, this is how I'm going to end veteran suicide. I started the No Fallen Heroes Foundation. We provide healing grants to veterans, first responders, and their families uh, to, do, to heal their trauma. Uh, we were forced for the past couple of years to go to Costa Rica, Mexico, to heal these heroes. Thank you uh, to the great state of Oregon and the great state of Colorado. We're finally starting to heal our heroes at home. We did our first healing retreat in the United States end of October. One of the Columbine first responders uh, sat with the medicine and the dude's a diff completely different human being. Great guy. Uh, and we've opened, me and my partners have opened a healing psilocybin clinic in Oregon. And we're taking our first people out there here uh, probably in a couple weeks, maybe next month. So incredible stuff going on. That's me and the fam. Uh, I'm obviously a lot older than this picture, but I love this picture because it's when we left Chicago when I was hanging out with the smart money for years, sitting in those boardrooms going, you guys kind of ain't that smart. I said, I can do this on my own. You can have Chicago. No offense to any Chicagoans. You can keep it. Oh, we got a, I'm a beach and a Navy guy. I need warmth and ocean. And it ain't, oh, we have Lake Michigan. I'm like, are you insane? 
My wife's from Boca Raton, so we moved down here to Florida in 2009, 10, and I started Topkin Options, and we've uh, never looked back. So that's when we started our adventure down here, which led to Topkin Options and uh, the No Fallen Heroes Foundation. Okay, let's go. That's me, and that took exactly the amount of time that I wanted it to take. On time, on target. Okay, let's get airborne. Look at the S&P 500, man. I told you yesterday, folks. Did ever all my TGO members in here? Did you get the bull put spread on out to Friday? Printing money right now. You, since day one of investing, you know what? Let me let me ask you something real quick. Let's do a little poll. Let me launch one of these polls. How many? If if you're brand new to investing, you can put number one. How many stocks? or ETFs or options positions do you currently have? Let me ask this before I we get airborne so I can have some of my Black Rifle coffee. One, two to five, six to 10, 11 or more. Okay. I should be playing the theme from Jeopardy right now, but about three more seconds. Good group in here today. Good to see everybody. One, two to five, six to 10, 11 or more. All right, closing the poll in three, two, one. F15s, come on, Arrow. All right, so, and I'm going to display this. 15% have a single position, 30% have two to five, 26% six to 10, and 30% have 11 or more. Wow. Okay. All right. Let's hide that one. And then let's do this one. Is your portfolio Diversified. Is your portfolio diversified? I have all my eggs in one basket. It's spread across the blackjack table. Is your portfolio diversified? Okay. 30% have voted. 35%. 40% have voted. Okay, more than 50% have voted, so I will close it and I will share. 73% are saying, yeah, man, I am diversified. 27% say no. Guess what? At the end of this brief this morning, both of those answers can be true at the same time. Why? How many of you would be shocked to hear that Wall Street is lying to you? I mean, I mean, duh, right? Duh. When I had my time in Chicago and Wall Street, going from a fighter squadron where you trust the men and women in that organization with your life to Wall Street where you couldn't trust somebody to watch your wallet when you went to the bathroom sucked personally for me. That's a separate story. Uh, but most of the people I met were disgusting. They'd push their own mother in front of a bus uh, to make a buck. But who's lying to you and why? How many of you have heard this? And somebody posted this on my social media advertising for this brief. I said diversification, right? It's dumb. You don't need it. Oh, so you expect us to put all our eggs in one basket? How many of you have said or heard that, right? You can't put all your eggs in one basket. You'd be insane. <clears throat> you have got to what? Got to diversify. Diversification is important. The five steps to diversify, 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 diversify. They froth at the mouth telling you that you have to diversify. You're an awful human being and you're going to hell if you don't diversify. Holy crap. Who told me that? That guy. Whenever you hear the word broker in your life, delete the word and put commission. Stockbroker. Yacht broker, uh, aircraft broker, securities broker, real estate broker, 
cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. Ladies and gentlemen, these guys make a shit ton of money with the more names that you're in. It's an industry practice called churn, ladies and gentlemen. Let's pick up the phone, boys. Get up the little old lady in tennis shoes out of this stock and get them into this one today. Cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. See the Wolf of Wall Street? We made over 23 million in commissions this week. Bah, bring in the marching band and the strippers. They need you in as many names as possible. And before you type in the chat box right now, Mr. or Mrs. Smarty Pants, well, Wiz, uh, I actually trade at a discount broker uh, or Robin Hood, and I don't pay commissions. Ladies and gentlemen, if you do not pay commissions, you are not the customer. You are the product. If you're not paying anything, you're not the customer, you're the product. You know who the customer is at Robinhood? It's Ken Griffin, who runs Citadel. It's Stevie Cohen at SAC Capital. Ladies and gentlemen, it's called payment per order flow. They pay Robinhood, not you, so you're a sucker. Ladies and gentlemen, diversification is for stupid people. Now, if that offends you, buck up, little buttercup, because I'm a fighter pilot. I'm direct. Let's move on. Let's get going. Let's, I'll find an, an old man to be nicer than me. How about that? Diversification is a protection against ignorance. It makes very little sense for, the, for, for those who know what they're doing. Let that sink in. This nice old man said it nicer than me. But I gave you the cliff notes. Diversification is for stupid people. It makes very little sense if you know what you're doing. Ladies and gentlemen, the only stock you need to own for the rest of your existence, which is infinite, is Amazon. Period. As you're about to see, it is diverse in and of itself. This is without a doubt the most diverse stock on the planet. I'm a political science major from South Jersey, South Philadelphia. Let's look at the chart, baby. Hockey stick. Does anybody see a trend with their net revenue in billions? Folks, it's disgusting how much money this company makes. It's going straight up. Let's take a look at the annual revenue by segment. Ladies and gentlemen, AWS, Amazon Web Services, is Microsoft. It's got its own Microsoft. And by the way, in 2012, Andy Jassy, the current CEO, and Jeff Bezos came up with the idea for cloud services at Amazon. They did it in a condo. I've heard the story. He's, I've seen him tell me. He's like, yeah, we just kind of came up with AWS in my condo one night. Oh, that, that's just great. And now you have a company that kind of rivals Microsoft. Look at the revenue segments, folks. Amazon annual revenue by segment. Okay, printing money. Now, when you say cloud, or somebody says cloud, like who who's cornered the cloud? I'd say Microsoft uh, and Google, clearly, and Apple, right? That they have some sort of iCloud, and that's that's who runs the cloud. And I'd be a complete idiot. That is absolutely a thousand percent wrong. The cloud infrastructure market is dominated by Amazon. You mean the thing with the blue delivery trucks and the airplanes and you can order a toothbrush and get it in an hour? That Amazon owns the cloud? Yeah, it does. Does Microsoft deliver toothbrushes or Google or the next 20 companies? No. The cloud services infrastructure market is dominated by Amazon. Now we're going to get political. Why? Because Democrats, AOC, hate this slide. Let me delete the word Amazon up here. If you asked old whiz when I started investing 33 years ago, if I would buy this stock, I'd look at it and say, <clears throat> wow, look at the sales. It's printing money. It's disgusting. It's the best thing I've ever seen in my life. Wait a minute. Free cash flow. That's a big delta between what they're bringing in and, and how much cash is free. And then I'd look down here at profit and I'd go, for the love of God and all things holy, I'm going to short this stock. And I'd be broke. Why? 
This ties back to why Democrats hate this stock. We need to ta- – Jeff Bezos makes filthy amounts of money, and we need to tax him and destroy him. Uh, by the way, Amazon doesn't make any money. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Bezos doesn't know what the word dividend means, and he also – Jeff Bezos' philosophy since day one, when he was operating on like a sawhorse's table, said what? If I make money, I'm going to put it right back into the company. If I make a dollar, I'm going to use that dollar to put a competitor out of business, to innovate, to buy another aircraft, to do something. So they barely make any profit. That's why Democrats hate this company, is because of capitalism. The guy... Hate, hate the game, right? Not the player. Jeff Bezos is brilliant. Very, very little profit in Amazon because the money that they print, they put it back into building the Death Star. You cannot get any better than that. JG, with a small account, trading whizzes Amazon trades netted 8900 bucks in a week. Kristen, you guys are amazing. I trade a smaller account and have done 22 Amazon trades this year for a $31,000 profit. Kristen, month to date profits on Amazon, 107 grand with more to go. Thanks to Wiz for all your expertise and guidance doing day trades with short calls and protect my Amazon uh, profits. Learning from the best. And then Ann down here making me look like I'm an idiot. Uh, in November, in three days, I made $90,000 on short calls against my 30 contracts utilizing Wiz's guidance. Now, before. I'm sitting here all sunshine, lollipops, and unicorns talking about how great just trading Amazon is. I'm a fighter pilot. I'm an options trader. We have to brief the threats to this mission. What are the risks of just trading a single name like Amazon? Anybody ever hear of a small mom and pop company called Lehman Brothers? 150-year-old company gone in a couple days. How about Bear Stearns? Right? Jim Cramer remembers Bear Stearns. You're an idiot at the height of the financial crisis. You're an idiot if you don't buy Bear Stearns. Your money stays at Bear Stearns. $70 stock when he was ranting at the mouth, it was at zero a couple days later. Good call, Cramer. How about uh, Pets.com? How about uh, Enron? Ladies and gentlemen, I I could spend the next 37 minutes uh, going through the cemetery of stocks that have gone to zero. Stocks can go to zero. What's the common thread through these four examples? They didn't own a thing. Looks like Lehman Brothers didn't even own the sign on the building. They own, Bear Stearns and uh, Lehman Brothers own paper, counterparty risk, nothing. I feel like, uh, what's the name in uh, Wolf of Wall Street? All right, all right, all right. It's nothing, it's air, it's <laughs> Pets.com owned a stinky sock and a URL, a domain name. Enron, I don't even know. God bless Enron for their scumminess. Or not God bless them. Um, They were a middleman of electricity. What the hell does that mean? They didn't even own the building they were in, folks. All of these things went to zero because they didn't own stuff. Can the share price of Amazon go to zero? Absolutely. The odds of being killed by a golden retriever are never zero. Same thing with the uh, odds of Amazon going to zero. But it's almost physically impossible, ladies and gentlemen. Amazon owns things. They own stuff. I did uh, consulting south of Miami International maybe a decade ago at an Amazon fulfillment center. I've been on a couple aircraft carriers in my day, folks. I thought the aircraft carrier flight deck was chaotic. This Amazon fulfillment center, man, robots zipping around humans and packing. It was insane, and it was the size of an aircraft carrier. That has value. Land has value. Ten years ago, uh, I got – so full disclosure, I used to fly for FedEx. Hated it. Showing up to Memphis at midnight and flying until 8 in the morning and trying to sleep during the day. You can keep it. No, thanks. I left. But like 10 years ago, a buddy of mine who stayed, went into management, became a suit, called me. He's like, hey, man, who's Jeff Bezos? So I'm like, he runs Amazon. Why? He's like, well, that's weird. I just heard from a buddy of mine at GE Aircraft Leasing that he's leasing five jets. I'm like, he's going to do it. 
He's like, what's he going to do? I'm like, he's going to put you out of business. <laughs> You're an idiot, Wiz. <laughs> Who's an idiot? Look at the dates on these headlines. Uh, September of 2021, Amazon is now shipping cargo for outside customers in its latest move to compete with FedEx and UPS. Next headline. Look at the date. Amazon poised to pass UPS and FedEx to become the largest delivery service by early 2022. This one, about six months ago. The biggest delivery business in the U.S. is no longer UPS or FedEx. Amazon is eclipsing both carriers, and the gap is growing. Now, if you don't me, know me, I, I certainly never called my buddy back and gave him shit, did I? Anyway, and then this was a recent headline. FedEx and Amazon discussed partnership as competition for returning packages intensifies. <laughs> I'm right. Whoa, hold on. What is this guy doing in my brief? Hey, what is another risk to Amazon? At the beginning of this guy's presidency, he woke up one morning or didn't go to bed, depending on who, who you believe, grabbed his cell phone and started tweeting. Amazon, monopoly. Nobody does monopolies better than Amazon. Somebody should break it up. Awful, awfulness. Just ask me. Believe me. What happened? The stock went down a little bit. For the love of God, the president of the United States just tweet, tweeted that we're, we're, we're a monopoly and should be broken up. The stock went down. Then what happened? Nothing. Stock continued to climb for the next three years. Last year of his presidency, Amazon, even bigger monopoly. Jeff Bezos owns the Washington Post. Unbelievable. Break them both up. Stock went up that day and never looked back. So, yeah, there is political risk. You can't swing a dead cat without seeing some negative headlines about Amazon, right? Antitrust, DOJ, antitrust, uh, this and that, and FTC, and it's just, you know. But guess what, ladies and gentlemen? Last time I checked, Jeff Bezos probably, I think he's, depends on the price of Tesla, right? I think he's the second richest man in the world today. I think he has one or two attorneys on staff. To fight this, Apple is trying to get clipped. I'm old enough to remember Standard Oil. I wasn't around for it, but I know the history of it. Standard Oil, Microsoft, AT&T, IBM. The average time from when the DOJ or Uncle Sam says, we think you're a monopoly. Five, 10, on the outside, 15 years it takes them to get around to like, you know, trying to do something. Apple's in the breach right now. But ladies and gentlemen, it's too late. Amazon is mercury. If you tried to smash Amazon today, you'd break it up into 12 little monopolies. We're going to, you have to break out Amazon Air. It's bigger than FedEx and UPS. Amazon Prime Entertainment. It's bigger than Netflix and Disney Plus combined. AWS is Microsoft. You morons, it's too late to blow up the Death Star, ladies and gentlemen. So potential threat is obviously political, but uh-uh. Um, I This was interesting. Towards the end of last year, do you remember like there was thefts in Lululemon and all these uh, Walgreens and CVSs, right? People would just walk in and take, take shit and walk out. James Woods tweet. Just so everybody understands the game here, Lululemon and these other national brand stores don't care about theft because A, this crap is in fact virtually worthless, and B, they would rather sell it online. No fuss, no muss, no employees. When you see the stores locking everything up behind glass and forcing customers to select from a kiosk, it's a way to avoid excessive minimum wage to human workers and lawsuits from all the sales staff loonies who aren't addressed by their mythical pronouns. Invest in Amazon, folks. Pretty soon, it'll be the only marketplace left. About the same time I told you uh, that Amazon was going to take over FedEx and UPS, I also said get bearish. Get bearish on Walgreens, CVS. I wish I had said Rite Aid. I, Rite Aid sucks. 
Rite Aid just went out of business. But I was saying get bearish on Walgreens and CVS, right? Why? Because all of this stuff, ladies and gentlemen, is Amazon, you're, you're going to get a text, hey, your prescription's here, go to your front door, open the door, the drone's going to scan your eyes and drop the prescription in your hand. Or the blue van will be out in front of your house and say, hey, here's the PIN number, enter it on the side of the van, here comes your package out of the door. Ain't no driver who needs to pee, eat, unionize, needs a health care plan and a retirement plan. That dude's gone. It'll be a driverless electric vehicle. Why am I, why is the picture of me and Gordon Gecko up here? Because I can't stand Amazon. I can't stand Jeff Bezos. He's a limousine liberal. He thought he could kiss all the limous, uh, other limousine liberals' ass and get away with it. Now they're coming after him. Good. I can't stand limousine liberals. Now I'm going to put on my $10,000 Armani and say, get a, if you want a friend whiz, get a dog. Amazon is fantastic. I love Jeff Bezos. 300 employees tried to unionize in like Long Island last year. He fired them all. Good. Pay him shit wages. <laughs> so again, I'm a little bipolar when it comes to investing, right? So uh, you want a friend, get a dog. All right. That was all the risks. And now we got to get to the trading platform. Benefits of trading a single stock. You trade the same name. And you're going to potentially profit no matter which direction Amazon moves, up, down, uh, or sideways. You stay focused on the news and events that impact Amazon. Instead of many stocks and ETFs, you become an expert in Amazon, reducing time spent on other positions. Okay? We had a – so uh, just a quick story. Everybody look at that picture again so I can get agita. When I moved to Boca Raton, uh, an orthopedic surgeon that I'm really good friends with right now found out about Topkin Options. I need your help. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. Met him at Starbucks. Thank God he's a doctor because when he showed me his brokerage platform, he had 33 positions. I think I passed out and hit my head, man. When I came to, I'm like, what is this? He's like, all right, well, let me show you. Uh, I think this is a pot stock. I'm like, did you just say, I think? Well, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, this one's a surgical stock. My buddy got me into it. It's down 50%. When it gets back up to where I bought it, I'll get out of it. I'm like, doc, you're a doc, right? Yeah. Are you somewhat intelligent? Yeah. What's the math behind the stock being down 50% right now, having to go back up to where you bought it? What's the, what's the, I'm like, shut up. Stop talking to me. I'm like, dude, you work 12 hour days, office hours surgeries he's like yeah i'm looking at my phone trying to trade in between you know uh, patients i'm like are you insane stop it simplify your trading cockpit so no offense to anybody who answered the answers like i got more than 10 or anything like that folks we had research analysts remember that trading floor i showed you we had a research desk like 25 researchers sitting all the way over there a senior analyst senior had maybe three to five names they had to know, they had to eat, breathe, and sleep. A junior analyst would start with one, at most two. You know how many times I got up from my desk and went over to the research analyst and looked at him like, see what XYZ stock did today? Yeah. And, oh, well, yeah, I didn't, I, you know, I, didn't, I didn't know about that. Folks, these people were paid a shitload of money to eat, breathe, and sleep and know everything about that company. Please tell me how you with your 10, 15, 20 positions is doing that. I'm all ears. I'll show you my brokerage account, man. I am long-term bullish on Amazon and psychedelic stocks. That's it. And then I day trade, you know, my S&P 500. At most, I have three to five positions on at any one point in time. Unless you're sitting here for 24 hours a day, folks, and I'd rather get my teeth drilled than do that, it is time to simplify your trading cockpit. Amazon is the only stock you need to trade. Now, if you're sitting here and going, Dude, I like this, but they, they bit me in the neck with, I have to diversify, diversify, diversify. Guess what? We can also trade the XLY. It's, a, it's called the Consumer Discretionary ETF. It's an exchange-traded fund. It's a basket of stocks. One of my good buddies told me that shrimp are a vehicle for eating cocktail sauce. The XLY is a vehicle for eating Amazon, 25-ish percent of this ETF, you get your Amazon fix. Now you also get your diversification. 
Home Depot, McDonald's, Nike, Lowe's, Starbucks, Booking, TJX, Target, Dollar General. So there, ladies and gentlemen, is your discretionary. So technically, we could be trading two positions, Amazon and XLY. Okay, how do we target Amazon and XLY for max profit? Well, right now, we're going to look at my brokerage platform, and I'm going to be a Marine. I'm going to fly into the future in that F-35, and we're going to establish a beachhead, a base position. We're going to be long-term bullish on Amazon all the way out into the future. It's either called synthetic stock or a long call diagonal. You see what's in the parentheses? I never went flying in a fighter jet without an injection seat. You have protective puts. We'll put protective puts around our position. You can't make money if you're losing money. I told you the mission objective today ain't to make money. It's to not lose money. And then step two, we'll go ahead and look to make money. Step two, we're going to trade the front months. What's the front month? You're sitting in a front month, right? March, April, May, or no, we're in April. April, May, June. So we, here on your screen right now, is two positions in your brokerage account. We have a long-term bullish position on Amazon, and then we're going to trade the front months. Hey, Amazon's going up. All right, we'll trade some bullish spreads. We'll buy some calls maybe. Uh-oh, Amazon's going down. Don't give me uh-oh. I'm going to make money as Amazon goes down, if it goes down, with some bearish spreads, or we'll buy some puts. Uh-oh, is it's just kind of moving sideways. Amazon's kind of hovering. Well, if you're a chump and you just trade stocks, you don't make money on, the, uh, on a stock going sideways. We do. There's a tactic called an iron condor. It's a range-bound trade. It's a football field trade. The stock can run all over, you know, can kind of hang out in the football field as long as it doesn't step out of bounds. So as an options trader, ladies and gentlemen, we can make money with uh, the market going up, down, or sideways. All right, so let's pull up my brokerage account. I am right on time. We'll go right at the hour point. <clears throat> In my brokerage account right now, let's take a look at this trade. This is a long-term bullish position on Amazon. It's called synthetic stock. I didn't buy the stock because I'm smart. I've had this trade on for about three months. It's up close to $8,000 a 92% return, ladies and gentlemen. Isn't that awesome? So let's go look at Amazon. Let's pull up a chart. Six-month chart of Amazon. Anybody see a trend? <laughs> Actually, let me go over here. I like this uh, display of... Let's just go here. Let's look at Amazon. Anybody see a trend here? Let me go... Let's go six months. Look at this. Just And it, this is the human circulatory system. That red line is the 200-day moving average. The blue line is the 50-day moving average. And the green line is what we call the 20-day moving average, man. Anybody see a trend here? Yeah, it looks like it keeps bouncing off this 20-day moving average. Well, we had a little bit of a pullback with some volatility at, in December. little sell the news on the Santa Claus rally, and then it never has looked Back. Ladies and gentlemen, this stock, every earnings that I can remember has been essentially blowout earnings. Now, obviously, it had a little chop back here towards the you know summer and end of last year, and then never looked back. Listen to me. I've been doing this for over it's uh, three decades I've been doing this, folks. This doesn't happen. It's happening right now, Wiz. What I'm getting at is it's not going to keep going up forever. There will be some profit taking. We'll have a little pullback. But as I teach you how to trade options, guess what? We can make money if it does start in going down. Look at that. Aaron, I have had my eye on since last year, and I'm up almost 700%. That is the power of the synthetic stock positions, ladies and gentlemen. It's something like that. So let's just talk real quick in case you are Wiz, because I, I know a lot of, uh, of the new signups know nothing about trading options. They just trade stocks. Folks, if you wanted to buy, I want to buy 100 shares of Amazon today. Buy 100 shares of Amazon today. You are coming out of pocket $18,000. Holy shit, man. I don't, I don't have 18 grand. Well, don't worry about it because I'm going to get you 
a hundred shares of Amazon at a fraction of the price. You're going to control those shares. What are you talking about? Ladies and gentlemen, you can buy, let's do this. Let's buy one options contract. If you're new to options, ladies and gentlemen, let me give you the most important lecture of options. And then welcome to being an options trader. One options contract equals 100 shares of stock. This is what the white guys with the cigars in the back rooms when they came up with call options are like, hey man, let's come up with a way that instead of have, you know deploying that 18 grand in capital, why don't we come up with an agreement? It's called an options contract. I have the right to buy 100 shares of Amazon all the way out to December of 2026. When you buy a call option, folks, you have the right to buy these shares. 98% of options contracts don't get exercised. Let me give you the example. What's exercise mean? Meaning, in two years, you want to take the 1,000 shares. Uh-uh. Amazon is going to keep going up and to the right, so the value of this options contract is going to go through the roof. So, ladies and gentlemen, if I buy one December of 2026, 180 call. Why did I do 180? Well, that's what the stock is at right now. This is called an at-the-money call. We could buy one December 26, 180 call. $5,000. Holy crap, Wiz, you just saved me $13,000. Instead of buying 100 shares of Amazon today and being a sucker because Amazon doesn't pay a dividend or anything, you saved me $13,000. Well, maybe I'll save you even a little bit more. If you're following along with me, you know that one options contract equals 100 shares of stock. And if I buy a call option, I'm bullish. I think Amazon's going to go up over the next two years. Well, let me just give you a little 30-second brief about a put option. Now, if you've never heard of a put option, it's insurance. If you buy a put option, it's the opposite of a call option. I'm buying a call option. I'm bullish. I think Amazon's going to go up. If I buy a put option on Amazon, I think it's going to go down, Okay, which I don't. So if you buy a put option because you think something's going to go down, who's on the other side of that trade? Well, somebody is selling that put option, which they don't think that's going to go down, right? A buyer of a put thinks it's going to go down. A seller of a put thinks it's going to go up. A put seller is an insurance company, right? We're going to collect premiums because we don't think you're going to wreck your car or hurricane's going to get hit your house. Ah, shit, it did. So how about we sell a put option at the same strike? Let's sell the 180 put. Holy crap, ladies and gentlemen. Now it's down to $2,200. Instead of $18,000, instead of $5,000, I've gotten you into 100 shares of Amazon for $2,200. Okay? Now, let's go look at the risk here. I told you I'm a fighter pilot. I ain't going to talk about making money until I talk about what? How much we can potentially lose. Max potential loss, $20,000. Holy shit. What do you mean, holy shit? The max potential loss in this trade, ladies and gentlemen, is the same as if you if you bought 100 shares of Amazon today at 18 grand, what's the risk? It goes to zero and I lose the 18 grand. Exactly. So in a synthetic stock, and this is called synthetic stock, in a, here's the long stock position and here's me using options. In a synthetic stock position, ladies and gentlemen, you have the same risk as being a shareholder. You have the same risk as the shareholder at 18 grand. Why would you come out of pocket 18 grand, folks? You can use options contracts. Instead of spending 18 grand, you can only come out of pocket two grand. Now, real quick, and I want to keep us on time. 
I want to protect us. I told you I use what's called a protective put. What's a disaster? Let's round up and just say it's Amazon's $200 stock. Have you ever heard on CNBC or whatever like, hey, we're in a bear market right now because stocks are down 20% or Apple's in a bear market. It's the stock's down 20%. Why don't we buy a put option? Let's do a little insurance policy, 20% underneath the price of the stock, right? About, yeah, about a one, let me add option, put. Let's buy a single put option down at about 145-ish or something, okay? Now, it's going to cost us a little bit more because we're buying something. We're buying a protective put. I didn't go flying without an ejection seat. I bought a protective put. But instead of risking $20,000, like being long stock, what's the risk? Seven. I'm a wizard, man. That's not why my call sign's whiz. But instead of risking 18 grand or 20 grand or any of that horse shit, 7,100 bucks. Ladies and gentlemen, I just gave you the first full throttle brief in about seven minutes. So if you're new to trading or new to investing or new to options and you hung with me a little bit, you can do this. If you followed, I know I talked a little fast. I want to keep us on time. If you followed me at all, like, yeah, I'm kind of getting it. Welcome aboard. This ain't rocket surgery, folks. We got little old lady in tennis shoes. We got stay-at-home dads. We got airline pilots, active duty. We got doc. We have everybody in the world as TGO members. I've taught people who didn't even know what the hell the stock market was, how to trade options. If you followed me a little bit, you can get this. And I'm going to tell you about our full throttle training in a second here. But do me a favor. On your little screen you're looking at all this stuff at, there's a little camera icon. Take a screenshot of that. Take a screenshot of that. And this is the trade that I would do today. So we would be doing synthetic stock at the 180 strike today with a 145 put. I'm going to show you, again, my personal trade that we put on a couple months ago. With Amazon going up and to the right, let me just, uh, it's up 90, as we're talking, Amazon's going up in this brief, 92%, 93%, 7,900 bucks in a couple months. If Amazon keeps doing what I think it's going to do up and to the right, this trade potentially will close for close to $100,000 profit in 2.5 years. How many of you would like to make about 100 grand, if not more, in two and a half years? That's, you know, 50 grand a year, or whatever type of return. Now, this isn't day trading. This isn't in and out and snipe. I don't care. I have different ships deployed for that. I got S&P trades on. I got a shitty Boeing trade on because Boeing sucks. But ladies and gentlemen, this is in the background. This is slow and steady wins the race. This is, this is, and real quick, do not do synthetic stock trades on stocks that ain't going to be around in a couple years. I say when in doubt, run to Ma, Microsoft and Amazon. Obviously, this is in solo Amazon, so I just trade Amazon. But ladies and gentlemen, if you do a synthetic stock trade on an Amazon and it just keeps doing what it's doing, this is close. I think we had an, a synthetic stock on Amazon a couple of years ago that was like 150 grand trade uh, by the time we closed it two and a half years later. Amazon was on a tear. I was post COVID. Made 150 grand in a trade that cost me, I think it was about five grand. That's how you can see Arrow, Aaron, one of our badass female fighter pilots who said, What? My trade's been on about a year and I'm up 700%. That is possible with synthetic stock trades. So again, ladies and gentlemen, if you're new to trading options or investing and you hung with me, I didn't scrape you into the wall and you were kind of like, I know he's talking you know, pretty fast, but I, I, I'm kind of getting this. Welcome aboard Top Gun Options. Okay. So let's talk real quick because I want to keep us on time. Solo Amazon, our newest live trading service, uh, 97 bucks a month. I was a drinker, folks. Not that there's such thing as a good drinker. I was a bad drinker. I couldn't drink. Why am I talking about me and drinking? Because old whiz in the solo Amazon briefs would say, hey, for the price of a cheap bottle of wine, I really don't. I mean, I can have a glass of wine now. Uh, but for 97 bucks a month, or I'll give you a discount. If you do an annual membership today, it's eight ninety seven for a year. I'll give you two months free. Okay. And actually, hold on, because Brianna, my lady, let's 
in here and she said, hey, here's the link for today. So she gave me an updated, uh, where is she? Right here. Let me give you the updated page right now. Yeah, it, you can either do 97 bucks a month or uh, it's a, dis, a discount. I'll give you a couple months free if you do the annual. So hang on one second, let me give you this page. Yeah, and yeah, absolutely. No, no, man, you ain't doing anything without training. I will talk to you about the training. So here we go. This is it. Here's the sales page. Put it in the chat box. Control V, fire. So there it is right now, folks. It's right in there. And let me um, let me talk you through this here. And the two buttons are right here. Join monthly for 97 bucks a month, or you can save uh, with the annual. I think that's a 20, 25% discount, or technically it's it's two months free. Okay. All right. So, hey, last year, uh, nearly $100,000 just in the solo Amazon portfolio. Uh, year to date, oh, I have the primary portfolio up, but here's uh, how we doing in this one. We're up 14, 13,000 bucks so far uh, in this portfolio with Amazon. We're up 76 grand total in this portfolio uh, year to date. But in the solo Amazon, Amazon, total Amazon profits across our portfolios uh, year to date are 52,000 totaled up across all the uh, uh, my four portfolios. Hey, Wiz, solo Amazon brief. Every Monday at 10 a.m., man, I work for a living. Well, guess what? 80% of our TGO members work for a living and can attend Monday at 10 a.m. What do we do? I send out email alerts with trades. Um, hey, man, here's a screenshot of the trade, the risk, the max potential loss. 30 minutes-ish after the brief. It depends on how long it takes for the recording to render on my computer. The replays posted. There are people who are like, hey, man, I watch the replays at lunch or when the kids go to bed. Uh, this guy, Chris, I'm so geeked. I've been a subscriber for almost three years now, and this is the first time I've been able to attend live. I only know you uh, from the replays. Okay, so today I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do you a solid, man. Primary, intermediate, advanced. These are your flight manuals. Do not go flying without your flight manuals. If you go to our homepage right now and want to buy these the three manuals, they're 197 bucks. So let me help help the political science majors this morning. Hold on a second. It's 97 bucks a month. Uh-huh. It's 197 for the manuals, but uh, he's throwing these in. Yeah, man, you just made 100 bucks. Saved you 100 bucks, made you 100 bucks. These things, between us ladies, I go read these things every once in a while. I'm like, I got to go read up, knock the rust off some volatility. Boom. These things are worth 197 bucks. I'm going to throw them in today. Uh, if you join. So here's what you get. Access to our solo Amazon live trade brief every Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern. Email alerts, our skill-based manuals, and you get access to our members only. It's called the Ready Room. It's an online forum. In between the briefs, say, hey, Wiz, I got a question or you need to chat or post some intelligence. It's called the Ready Room, just like in a fighter squadron. Okay, Bob, closed uh, Amazon synthetic stock, 37 grand profit. Goose, 23,800 in a month. Chuck, thank you, Wiz, for the Amazon calls yesterday. I closed three contracts at my 30% profit target. Cleared 15 grand. Also had Amazon calls that hit also hit 30% for another 50. Now, test slide for a month. Like I said, it's only 97 bucks. Okay. Before you even type the question, the answer is yeah. It's 97 bucks a month forever. If you it never goes up, folks. It's just 97 bucks. If you're like a couple months into it and go, you know what? I'm ready to save some money and upgrade into an annual. Just shoot us an email. Hey, I'd like to upgrade into uh, an annual membership. Now I'm the Flex Seal tape guy. But wait, there's more. There is more. Just like on Amazon when you buy something and you check out and they say, hey, do you also want this cool stuff? The answer is yes. If you followed me a little bit today but you need some training, there's going to be an option that says, hey, do you want the full throttle training? It's 295 bucks, folks. Other places charge like five grand for their crap. It's like videotapes of a guy in front of a whiteboard. They suck and they charge like five grand. It's a disgrace. Mine, 295 bucks, folks. It's a building block approach, just like I did in Navy flight training. This is aerodynamics. This is a molecule. This is a wing. You start with the basics, trading methodology, my intelligence sources, what are calls and puts, and we take a building block approach. That synthetic stock is all the way down here, folks. If you followed that seven minutes that I covered that tactic, like I, I think I could probably get that. Well, you're going to get an hour and a half of it where you're going to be like, holy shit, now I'm a graduate level in that stuff. 
Folks, this ain't rocket surgery. This is not hard. You put a little bit of effort into it, and you're going to absolutely crush it. Uh, here's a perfect example. Utah, Mark Provo. Uh, everybody, everybody's seen the Blue Angels, right? The varsity team instead of the, the JV team, the Thunderbirds. He was, a, he was a FedEx captain, didn't even know what a stock market was. He was on a, a layover down in Fort Lauderdale. He's like, dude, I've been following your Top Gun option stuff. I need to learn how to trade. Had lunch with him. He bought for, paid for lunch, of course. Uh, a couple weeks later, good morning. Less than 20 trading days, and I'm up 15 grand on a 40 grand account. And I'm like, well, shit, bro, if anyone can do it, <laughs> if you can do it, anyone can do it. And, and that was a 38%. I'm like, most people would kill for a 38% return in a year. I just showed you the average hedge fund at the beginning of this brief, 9% last year. Utah made 30% in a couple of weeks with our training. Great dude, great American, love my Utah. Uh, more testimonials, whatever. Uh, like I said, newest trading service, our other briefs since we trade psychedelics and other names and weekly options in the S&P 500, they're 167 a month because we trade, I'm trading other things. But since we're just focusing on Amazon or XLY, it's cheaper. $8.97 uh, a year or $97 a month. Look at me. I'm right on time. Folks, <clears throat> if you didn't learn anything today, I failed miserably, but I doubt that. Simplify your trading cockpit. Do, I was going to say, do me a favor. You ain't doing me a favor. Do you a favor. After this brief ends in about two minutes, I want you to look at your personal portfolio. Should I simplify my trading cockpit? Do I Am I sitting here for 18 hours a day? Am I an expert on every one of the names in my portfolio? Or am I flying around in that F4 Phantom, folks? Maybe it's time to simplify your trading cockpit. I have a folder of testimonials from people like, dude, I stopped trading all the shit I was trading, and I'm just trading Amazon, a little bit of XLY. And remember, folks, that synthetic stock position all the way out into the future is one trade. Now, we have a bull put spread on, and I should have showed you in the other portfolio, we have a bull put spread on Amazon out to next week or the week later, and it's already up like a grand. So that's two trades. So we can have multiple trades on. You can have three to five positions, and it be in one name. But again, the don't put your eggs in one basket bullshit is a lie. Amazon is more diverse than any company on the planet. Microsoft ain't diverse. Walgreens ain't diverse. FedEx is not diverse. Amazon is all of those things and taking them over. Join me in the solo Amazon service here at Topkin Options. And it's a gateway drug uh, into learning about other our other services here at Topkin Options. For example, on Thursday, we're going to be talking about our psychedelic stocks, our investments and stuff like that. But if you've wanted to, to kind of dabble, dip your toe in a TGO, you've been following me for a little bit and want to pull the trigger, it's 97 bucks, folks. Like I said, it's a crappy bottle of wine or maybe a really good bottle of wine, depends on your tastes. 97 bucks a month or 897 a year. Like I said, you're going to, you're going to, uh, uh, save two months, uh, with that. And here, yeah, here's the link right now. Um, it's called accelerated retirement. The accelerated retirement portfolio on Thursdays is where we talk about our psychedelic trades. Uh, yeah. Mind med was it popping today? Holy shit. Let's go, baby. 20% pop out of Mind Med today, folks. Yeah. Look at my call options in Mind Med today. 1700 bucks. I bought a couple call options. Hey, I know we're in solo Amazon. This stock. $50 to $100 stock in a year or two. I'm going to end my solo Amazon brief with a solo psychedelic brief. Jump in your airplane right now, folks, and fly out the Jan of 2026. Buy these call options. I'm in them, full disclosure. You can see my that I'm in them. Why? Because this is the farthest out in time you can go and the highest strike you can go. Buy these call options with both hands right now. Well, technically, I can't tell you what to do. I would buy these call options with both hands. I gave you a report on Oppenheimer last month that they said this is a $25 stock in a in a month. Look at this. I love it. Barry got in MindMed at 581. Loving my MindMed call options. Bruce, folks, look, this the psychedelic stocks are set to explode. 
that's a separate i'm glad i remembered that this accelerated accelerated retirement is where we talk about our psychedelic stocks but get on board solo amazon right now because it's a separate service from all that other stuff the other stuff is called full throttle you know tuesday through thursday we trade weekly options and psychedelics and volatility and all sorts of stuff solo amazon is a good gateway drug to uh to get you on board uh top gun options but look at that man oh look at mind med today folks holy crap that is a that's a baller what are the other names doing anybody else popping with that news i don't even know what the news is Cybin, Cybin's up two percent compass Wow, nice pop out of Compass, 4%, and then how about a tie? Holy crap, a tie's up. I told you, man, buy a tie with both hands. So you never thought you'd get more value in your solo Amazon marketing brief. Buy these psychedelic stocks. A tie's a $2 stock, folks. A tie is working on Ibogaine. Ibogaine is what I took in Mexico. 12, 14-hour experience. It saved my life. It changed my life. Buy the psychedelic stocks. Didn't think I'd end a solo Amazon brief with this, but look at this. God is good. Look at that. Basi. Basi means truth. Okay. So join solo Amazon first, and then it's a gateway drug, and I'll teach you about the psychedelic stocks and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. Go.topconoptions.com slash get dash solo dash Amazon dash now. The link's in the chat box. Yeah. You can. You just up, you just email. It's like, hey, man. I tried you out for a couple months at 97 bucks. I want to upgrade to the 897 annual. I do the eight. You save money today, folks, if you do the annual. If you followed me today, as uh, soon as you get in here, start looking to watch that full throttle training. Full throttle session one, full throttle. You'll get an email with your login and all the instructions. So start watching the training. Yes. Download your manuals, start reading them, and start watching your uh, full throttle training. All right. Sorry. Well, I ended up going over by seven minutes, mainly because I was talking about psychedelics, but I try to respect everybody's time. Thank you. I appreciate that. I, I try and respect everybody's uh, time here. Okay. Solo Amazon. Let's do it. 97 bucks a month or 897 a year. All right. I got to get going. Got a lot of fantastic stuff going on. If you want to do invest in microdoses, we're closed. Uh, I got a text from BJ this morning. He's like, dude, I'm done. We can't. If there's any stragglers, you have to turn them away. Um, so if if you didn't already talk to BJ, uh, thanks for your interest. But we're the the fund the funding round for microdoses is closed, we, and that's better for the investors who actually got in here. We don't want to we don't want to dilute. We only want what we need to succeed, and then not dilute the people who got on board first. So unless you you already talked to BJ, um, maybe we'll find you another opportunity. All right, I got to get going. I'll send out this replay uh, in case anybody showed up late or for the people who could make it. Have a great rest of your day, man. I told you as soon as we started this brief this morning to shoot a sniper on the S&P 500. I wish I did, but I was giving a brief. Take a look at this. Take a look at SPX. As soon as I started this brief, I said what? I pointed at the screen and said, fire a bull put spread. I said, shoot an SPX sniper and the market hasn't looked back. Damn it. But I love the people who listen to me in the background and printed money. If I shot that sniper, that probably would have been a two grand sniper. Uh, and I, I'd be out of it by now, obviously. All right, I got to go. Have a great rest of your day. Happy hunting. Make sure you're hedged. I'm going to teach you how to do that stuff. Fights on, man. Namaste and basi, basi. Basi means truth. Welcome aboard uh, Top Gun Options and Solo Amazon. I'll see you.